Hey guys, welcome back. Carter Bitsby Trippin. I've got a good one for you guys today. We are going to build a mining rig. I know it isn't so. Graphics card prices are off the crazy land, but we had a rig returned that was sold from a friend to another person, and it we had a, a live stream a few days back, and we were able to recover a few of the cards. We're going to put the six of the eight cards in this mining rig. We're going to take you guys through every step of that process meticulously and talk through all the different steps of that. So if you are able to get into some cheaper used GPUs, these are RX 580s. This is the video for you guys. We're going to try to make sure that you guys understand everything. Stay tuned for the sponsor and then we'll get right into it. Today's sponsor is Mining Disrupted. This is a crypto conference that's going to be taking place down in Miami, Florida on July 20th and 21st. BBT will be there, and we also got a coupon code for you guys that want to attend. It's coupon code BITSBETRIPPIN for saving 15% off. Links below. All right, guys, let's run through what are the components of this mining rig. Now we have a, the normal 8X style open air. You guys have seen me build a hundred of these. This was the original mining build that we did back in 2013 with you guys. So this is this came from our fabrication side back in the day, trying to find the most efficient way to move air around. This was in 2013. We'll throw a little spot here for you guys to take a look at that. Yes, we've been around for quite a bit. And this is one of the time-tested designs. So we have a Z270 ASUS Prime AR motherboard. This has an i3-7100 processor in it. Now you could get away with having the Celeron processors. This is gonna be running a Linux OS. Doesn't have a huge amount of requirements on running that. And we have a total right now of 16 gigs of RAM in it. You do not need 16 gigs of RAM this build. Let's move to the GPU real quick. So we have the MSI RX. 580 these are 8 gig cards these are going to be able to mine for quite some time these came out in late 2016 the these different gpus these ones were actually purchased in 2017 the cool thing about the rx series they have an 8 pin on them so a single 8 pin so it makes it a lot less requirement on your power supply and then moving over to the risers that we're using now we had got a, quite a few of these risers these are the version six. So uh, the big thing about risers, if you don't understand what risers are, risers are moving, they give you the ability to move the GPU away from the motherboard and allow you to separate the GPUs to get better cooling. So most risers come with the 30 centimeter extension here, which then give you, you know, uh, enough room to really get them spaced out appropriately. These version, I, I think they're up to like version 14 now on the risers. And we had some recently sent over from gpurisers.com. We'll show you guys a quick shot of those. And really just the evolution of the risers had a few more capacitors and a few different ways to attach power to it from the four pins to the six pin Molexes and having a couple different positions for the six pin PCIe connections on it. But from a reliability standpoint, I've, you know, I cannot say enough about these version six ones. So if you feel that you want to take a chance on the newer stuff that's fine but the version 6 c's have been exceptional for us especially at the mining farm running all the way from 2016 we still have rigs running pretty much 24 7 continuous now lastly we have the supernova 1600 t2 power supply now we have some extra power supplies here most power supplies that are bought new anymore these days we would recommend using something like parallel miner We'll show a link down here below for that. And using the server style, you can get a much better solution with the platinum power supplies that are available from the server style and the cheaper cost. So let's get right into this build now and we'll take you through each of the steps. All right, guys, first thing that we're gonna get into is we have the motherboard already secured in here. 24 pin plug in and then eight pin CPU plug. Now on this particular build, this build has a a pretty decent height to it. I used to build these with about 10 inches from the base to the top of the GPU. And then since then we moved those up to being closer to 12 to 14 inches 
above the motherboard. That way it makes it a lot more room underneath where you can get the risers. Now that these are in place, I actually like doing the six pin or the eight pins above, you know, getting at least some of that ran. And with this setup here, we're gonna be doing where they're sharing the actual same thread here because these GPs will not be pulling a ton of power. These are gonna be optimized using the same PCIe thread. So now that we have everything put together, we do a one last check to make sure everything is completely plugged in and all both the PCIe supporting rails that are on the GPUs, the risers are all connected, and then everything has appropriate power connected into it. All right, guys, let's dive into this. So only have two of the GPUs plugged in, the two farthest left GPUs right over here. And we made sure this machine had been off in a while, long, for a long time. So it looks like it had lost its BIOS settings. So this is one of the primary reasons why you want to always start with just a couple of the GPUs plugged in because six GPUs directly plugged into the motherboard most of the time will not work right out of the gate. So we're gonna go in here and we're gonna adjust this. We're gonna hit the delete key to get the BIOS up. If it doesn't come up, and then we're gonna go into F1 to get in to the BIOS of this particular motherboard. And what we're looking for on this one is we're gonna go ahead F7 to go into advanced mode. And we're gonna come over and we're gonna look for a few things. So the first one we like to look at is we wanna make sure the PCIe management stuff's all disabled. And then we wanna go into the SA control. For this particular motherboard, we're gonna go to graphics card config. We're gonna say the primary display. We can leave that to auto. Now, I have this plugged into the primary display itself right now, but you could set this to use the onboard on this particular Intel platform it has a built-in GPU, so you could use the onboard video as your main driver. But by and large, these are not gonna be plugged into any kind of monitor, so it's kind of neutral for me on that standpoint. And then you can come down and you wanna set your max link speeds. Now, I have always had good success with Gen 1 on these particular motherboards. Even some of the newer ones, setting all the link speeds to Gen 1. So we're going to do that real quick. I turn spread spectrum off. We're going to come back out one more, the PC, PCH configuration under the PCI configuration in here. Again, this most motherboards have this very nested in there. So you almost got to through, go through each of the various sections to ensure that you've gotten all of those disabled or turned off. Now, in this particular one, we're not doing any other kind of PCIe expansion through like the M2 slot. If you were using M2 expansion, that would go in where you normally would put an NVMe drive. You could set that to, you know, Gen 1 also and not, or, or Gen 2, whichever one it lets you go the lowest. You do not need the full four lane Gen 4 connection there. Now you come into here and this is what I was talking about here. So if like if you're using the, the M2 section, you would want to set that to PCIe mode, not the other mode, which is SATA mode, which is looking actually for like an NVMe drive itself. And then you could come in there and leave that at 2X. All this comes down to the reason why we're switching all these down is the resources that the motherboard has to use to allocate to the PCIe lanes. So that's why you're going there and changing those kind of things. Now, the last one that we're gonna to wanna to see here is actually under, under the boot for this particular motherboard, and that is the 4G decoding. This has to be enabled to allow the uh, multiple GPUs in this rig when you're past like three GPUs. So we would turn that on there. Now also, I like having a fast boot set up for if there's a power loss, the machine will automatically try to reboot if the power turns back on. That's a good thing to enable also, just in case you have like a power outage and you're out of town and the rig just auto reboots and your OS fires up and automatically starts the miner if you're using something like Linux OS. Now we're gonna save all of these settings. We do not wanna hit that escape there. We wanna come over and use the save settings. You can see the list of things that are now on this motherboard and set up and we're gonna hit okay there. Now that's gonna shut it down. And then what we're gonna do is make sure on the reboot here that we're just gonna power it down again and but leave it plugged in. So we're gonna just shut it back off again, which it is using the button there. And then we're going to plug all the PCIe risers back in to the machine and make sure that it's actually turned off. So we're actually now plugging in all the PCIe's back in. 
which would be now reconnecting all the GPUs to this motherboard. And then we can go and get ready to load the OS on there. Now that we're all set up with this and this rig is built and ready to go, that's the conclusion of this video. This is part one. We're gonna have part two coming out tomorrow, which now takes you through the operating system. So we're gonna be using Simple Mining for this build. I'm gonna walk you guys how to download it, how to set up an account, and how to configure across multiple different coins. That way you guys have a basic understanding if you find some cheaper GPUs or you find this video you know, six months from now and if we're in a kind of a bear market and there's not a lot of people mining, this is the time to start to dabble in it where you're looking at the lowest cost of operations that you can find when it comes to your capital cost and buying GPUs. Mining's not going anywhere. Mining's gonna be there forever. It's just a matter of if it, how profitable it is for some people, but people are always gonna be mining. So if you find this video and you wanna attempt this, I always say crawl, walk, run it. Try with just a couple GPUs. You can have a setup with just a normal case and you can still try a lot of these different settings and configurations, get the risers, that sort of thing. And then just work through the process yourself. You don't have to start with six GPUs. That's one of the things I like to make sure that people understand when I'm talking to them outside of the mining, you know, like they've never mined, they're curious about it. Start with a single GPU, understand what's going on, understand how proof of work works and what you are contributing to and why you're getting those coins that happen to be worth money. So hopefully this was a good one for you guys from the build standpoint. We wanted to make sure that it was split up. That way it wouldn't be this super long video. And then, of course, if you're catching this after part two comes out, you can just click that link above and it'll take you to part two, which is the OS build. And then that's the cradle to grave to start getting you mining. All right, guys, like, subscribe, and make sure you guys are sharing this if this interests you. And I'll catch you guys on the next one.